So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much to Independent Electric. I am so excited to be on IES TV for my very first time. Uh, big shout out to Patsy Collins and the ALR team for setting this up as well. I'm really excited to show you a little bit more about our Vive system, the perfect choice for your commercial projects. So before I get into this, a little bit of background on myself. My name is Sam Worth. I cover electrical distribution for the state of California for Lutron. Uh, I've been with Lutron about a year, year and a half. I'm originally from Boca Raton, Florida. We did not get it by the hurricane. I went to Lehigh. I graduated in uh, May of 2021. As you can see, I played baseball there as well. I'm based in Huntington Beach. So I'm a SoCal guy. And like I just said, I cover electrical distribution and lighting showrooms for Lutron. So you might be on this call wondering why lighting control? Why is Sam here talking to you about Vibe today? Well, a smart building can be classified into three distinct categories. So we have energy costs. Companies usually spend around $3 a square foot on energy, HVAC, lighting, et cetera. They spend $30 a square foot on operations, rent, just to keep the building open. And then a majority of the building is the most expensive asset most companies have, and that is people at 300 square feet. I'm gonna be focusing in on how we can take that $3 square foot amount and lower it a little bit to increase your end customer's bottom line. So what makes Vive awesome is that we have the right control for the right space. So what this makes it possible is that we can completely appropriately assign product to different spaces so we have exactly what we need in each space. This makes it very profitable as far as a bidding standpoint goes, and your end user is going to be a lot more comfortable in the space knowing that they have only a couple points of control that work every time and they're not confused or overwhelmed by a complicated system. From a contractor perspective, Vive is awesome because it installs up to 70% faster than wired systems. And you might be thinking to yourself, how is it 70% faster? Well, as you can see by that little diagram on uh, your screen there, it starts by little things, making Picos fit into a wall plate adapter. No screws, no cutting holes in drywall, but the wireless system, though the wireless piece of it, is what makes Vive uh, the best choice for installation efficiency. And that is called Lutron Clear Connect. So Vive uses something that we call Lutron Clear Connect Type A. It's our proprietary RF technology that gives you instantaneous, reliable communication anywhere in the room. Now, people have some speculations about wireless. Sometimes they think, oh, it's never going to work because they may have used something bad in the past. What I can tell you is, is Lutron has been doing this for over 24 years, and it just works. The reason for that is a lot of RF and a lot of wireless communication operates on the 2.4 gigahertz or even 5 gigahertz frequency band. Now, if you think those numbers are familiar, it's because they are. Your phone, your Bluetooth speakers, those are all operating on that same very busy frequency. As you can see by that picture on your right, you see that the bottom part of it is an example of that 2.4 gigahertz or 5G uh, waves. A lot of traffic. It's like the 405 at rush hour. You're not going to get anywhere fast, and it's pretty easy to get derailed from your final destination. With Lutron Clear Connect, we use a 434 megahertz frequency, which is a completely clear toll road at nine o'clock at night. You have completely smooth transportation of information, and that is what makes it so reliable. Also, because we are on such a low frequency, these Pico remotes and the PAL packs, they're only sending simple signals. It's a turn lights on, turn lights off dim lights up, dim lights down. It's not a complex packet of information, so we're able to lower that frequency as low as possible, and that gives us a couple of different things. I know I just mentioned the clear pathway of uh, communication, but it also gives us some unprecedented wireless range. Our specs are listed at 60 feet through construction, or line of sight and 30 feet through construction material. And what I'll tell you about that is that it's very, very conservative. I've seen these Pico remotes, connect from up to 100, 120 feet away. While I can't formally recommend that your Pico is going to work every time from that distance, I have experience that shows that our RF specs are very conservative and will work beyond what they're told. The 30 feet through construction material is a game changer when it comes to wireless communication because this gives you the ability to go through concrete, steel, glass with ease. The 30 feet is a little more hard set as far as that wireless range goes, so I would encourage you not to exceed that. 
but know that if you're open, if you're using this in an open hallway, open classroom, that you might be able to get a couple more feet out of it. Also, just for the sake of this presentation, if anyone has any questions at all, feel free to interrupt me at any time. I cannot see the chat from my perspective behind my computer here, so feel free to interrupt. Do not take it personally. So going back on the wireless communication, because this is really something that I want to harp on, you really haven't tried wireless until you've tried Lutron. This stuff works every single time, and it's because of that Lutron Clear Connect. As you can see by some of the numbers that you see on the screen, we've installed over 5 million wireless systems, and we rarely get ever, we rarely ever get callbacks. Part of that is because of the reliability of the communication, but also 100% of Lutron products are end of line tested so that you know when you order your Lutron system, it has been proven to work before it even left the factory. So why Vive? Why this particular lighting system? It's a pretty busy market and you have a couple different options, but I'm gonna tell you why Vive is your, your best choice. It's secure, it's cost effective, and it's scalable. I'll get into a little bit of more about this now. Security is a huge thing, especially when it comes to commercial office spaces. People don't want their stuff getting hacked, and with all the eyes and ears that may be in your daily lives, like your phone, your Alexa speakers, what have you, you want to make sure that nothing is going to get in between your lights turning on, your lights turning off. We put security by design built into Vibe. We have third-party validation that supports this, and we are continuously making improvements, software updates to make sure that the security of our customers stays first and foremost. Cost effective, huge deal when it comes to specking Vive or bidding out projects. As you can see by that chart you see on your screen there, when you start breaking it down from the total bid, the labor and overhead cost and material cost, the bottom line end profit is on average about $10,000 more for your electrical contractors relative to a competitor's wired system. That mainly has to do with how quick it is, it, how quick it's, it is to install, and the fact that you know exactly what pieces you need for each space, so you're not overbuying or overspecking the project for a bit. And then finally, it's scalable. This is a, another big thing when it comes to installation, and gives the end user a ton of flexibility when it comes to using Vive. Depending on what their business needs have changed to, they can start in what is small as a simple, a single office space, go to an entire floor, do a multiple floors, and then eventually go to the entire building. It is that easy to go from a single office space to an entire building. It's just a matter of adding a couple more parts and pieces along the way. It shouldn't be an intimidating process to scale it up. It's not going to be a big ordeal to have to come back and build out more vibe space. It's just adding another piece adding another dimmer or switch, and you're off to the races. And this goes to show how simple it is to design. So if you see this little chart here, you have your load controllers, your sensors, your Picos, your plug load controllers, and your in-fixture sensors as well. Those are all wirelessly communicating with what we call the Vive Hub that you see on your screen there. You may think that's a little bit of intrusive that's hanging off your ceiling, but honestly, if you're going to walk into a Vive uh, a Vive enabled building, which happens to be most standalone Starbucks, if not all alone, all standalone Starbucks in the United States, you'll have a very tough time finding that hub hiding in the ceiling. It blends right in and it makes the aesthetics of our system great. From a, from a contractor and specification standpoint, this really eliminates the confusion when it comes to specking out different rooms and spaces. Any combination of these controls will allow the Vive system to work, but it is, it can be boiled down to a couple of easy steps. So the first thing you're going to be doing is you're choosing your dimming and or switching controls. We have a couple different variants to show you. I'll get into a little, I'll get into more about this in a couple slides, but just know that we have dimming and switching options as well as those same options that live in the fixtures themselves. Next, we want to be Title 24 compliant or as close to Title 24 compliant as we can. So adding the radio power saver sensors, occupancy and vacancy is a big key to that. And these are wireless. They connect via that Lutron Clear Connect and push button programming. So it's as simple as taking your install, installing the ceiling and then screwing it right in and you're, up and you're good to go. Daylighting control. I'll zoom into this guy a little bit later because it is quite small. But adding daylight control is a key feature of Title 24 that we want to make sure that we have our bases covered on. This little sensor is powerful enough to control up to two uh, zones of lighting, 
and will allow a gradual dimming process that takes into account the natural daylight coming into the window. Choosing your Pico wireless remotes is how you maintain local control. But the big thing about Vibe, which I mentioned earlier, is that you no longer need to run the zero to 10 volt leads from the fixtures down the wall, punching a hole in the drywall and adding cost and time to the project. That Pico wall box adapter is what gives you the wireless communication from the power pack up in the ceiling to the Pico on the wall. And installing that faceplate adapter is just a couple of screws that you simply screw into the wall and nobody knows that it's not a hardwired switch. Even when I walk into spaces, I have to pull the faceplate off and check just to see if it's a hardwired switch because they are that well disguised. And then finally, at the very end, you're going to be adding the optional intelligence known as that Vibe Hub that I talked on earlier. What is cool about Vibe is that you don't need the hub in order for the system to work, but I highly recommend it for all large projects as this is what is the glue behind the system and what will give a facility manager the ability to monitor the system, monitor the building, as well as be as well as meet Title 24 requirements with the man response and load shedding. So the load controllers. If you've heard anything about Vive before, you may be familiar with one of these guys. This is what we call a POW pack. And I know that they have been on quite the lengthy supply chain, but they are getting slightly better. And we hope that by Q2 2023, these things will be shipping out as you it come to expect from Lutra. That's not the only load controller we have. So if your system, if your building, most often cases retrofits, has the existing wall box in there and has the wiring already done, we use our Maestro style in-wall controls to accommodate for that. This is a Vive compatible Maestro control, has the same clean aesthetics that you're used to with our MACL uh, LED plus variant, and allows for an easy plug and play retrofit installation if that's what the building has. I know I just talked about the power packs before, but to give some to give someone a little bit more clarity about this, this installs up in the plenum. The zero to 10 volt leads either come out through the nipple or through the back, depending on what model of power pack you have. And then this wireless lead via the RF technology connects to a Pico remote sitting on the wall. No more wires needing to be run down the wall. You might be looking at that in fixture module and thinking to yourself, what in the world is that? Well, what we do make is a one amp in fixture module perfect for individual office spaces that can either have an occupancy or vacancy sensor on it or just a simple RF receiver to make it compatible with the rest of the vibe system. New at the bottom of your screen there is the four by four phase selectable or phase adaptable power pack. It does have a slightly larger footprint than the traditional power pack, but what you get is the pro LED plus technology that allows these power packs to adapt to the load that they're trying to control. If you've ever used a Maestro Pro or a Sonata Pro wall box dimmer, it's the same concept where you have the ability to adjust on the fly as to what load you're controlling so you never run into dimming issues when you're using those power packs. So like I just talked about, we are on the wall control side of things. We did talk about the Maestro style. You see that we have screw terminals in there to account for various uh, J box sizes. And then going on to the Pico remote, you see how seamless that, that installation is and how thin of a profile it gives off. Pico remote, it's about as thin as your phone these days. And when it's in our faceplate, a little bit thicker than that. So it's a really seamless installation, looks good on any wall and gives you a couple different variants on what kind of variety of Pico you can use. We're talking a little bit more about Picos and the different varieties that come with it, but just know that you can maintain local control on the wall with either a hardwired switch or a wireless control. Now, what if your space has an existing wall box in it and your customer wants a dimmer sensor? Lutron is well regarded for our sensors. We use something called XCT technology, cross correlation technology in our sensors, and that allows for the detection of both major and minor motion. If you've ever been in a classroom before, you know what I'm talking about, where you might be sitting, working at your desk, might be typing on your computer, and then all of a sudden the lights go out. You think to yourself, why would this ever happen to me? I'm in the room, the sensor is supposed to detect me, why are the lights turning off? And you have to embarrassingly get up, do the light turn on dance every 10 or 15 minutes or whatever that sensor is timed out to. With the Lutron XCT technology, we have scientifically proven that 
it detects both major and minor motion as fine as turning a page of the book. This eliminates the false offs, eliminates the lighting dance, and so you can continue on with your day knowing that your sensor is going to be smart enough to know if you are actually in the room or not. What's great about the Vive in-wall RF dimmer sensors is that they are compatible with zero to 10 volt dimming, but we also make a switching version as well. It has the same LED plus technology that you're used to in our dimmer sensors, so you get the full broad range of the dimming spectrum there to make sure that you're getting the optimal dimming performance. This next slide is supposed to give you a little bit of more perspective on how these power packs are installed if you've never installed them before. Like I mentioned, it goes up in the plenum, hides out of sight, out of mind, but it's still easy to service with one of these grid-like ceilings that most office buildings have. And because it's push button technology, you're going to be installing it up there once, pushing the button, and you're good to go. And you rarely ever have to go up and service them, only if there might be an internal wiring issue of sorts. But as you can see, it goes right into the knockout of a J-Box. And what I'll show you is that the most popular version of this power pack is known as the RMJS-8TN. And the N stands for all the wires are coming out of the nipple, including the 0 to 10 volt leads. On the model I have right here in the model you see on your screen, the 0 to 10 volt leads will be going through the back. Both have the same amount of capability. It really is just based on customer preference on what they want to use when they're installing the power. I know I touched on the phase selectable power packs a little bit earlier, but this should give you a little bit more detail on those. It comes in a slightly larger footprint. It's a four by four, but it easily installs into those knockouts or either on the side or in through the knockout. But like I said, we get the phase selectable dimming, the pro LED plus technology. So regardless of what the lighting load is in the space, know that you have a power pack that is able to handle the job as well as integrate with the rest of the vibe system. Again, a little bit more clarity on how this installs, because quite honestly, when I first saw this power pack for the first time, especially being used to these guys that go in the knockout, I was like, how do these install? But as you can see on your screen there, it's a very simple installation. Shouldn't be any harder than installing a regular power pack, but you do get quite a bit more capability out of it. So this is outlining the SKUs that you have with our power packs. They come in a few different flavors, both in dimming and switching models as well as compatibility if you're working with ecosystem or dolly drivers. So the most popular ones that you see on your screen there is going to be the RMJS-8T-DV-B. It might be a dash 8 tn dv b depending on who you're working with. Both will have eight amps of dimming power, 960 watts, quite a lot of power to be able to control from a single device. But what that gives you the, the ability to do is put your lights on zones so you get as customizable control over your lights as you would want. The FCJS or the FCJS 010, that's going to be that in fixture module I was talking to you about. So one amp of power to control an individual fixture or an individual office space. It can control up to three drivers. So know that you have that capability in mind when you are installing the in fixture modules. The RMJS-PNE-DV, that's the phase selectable one I was talking to you about. They come in both emergency and non-emergency variants, as well as the RMJS-8T. And then finally, for switching, we have up the ante on the power there. You have up to 16 amps of switching control. And again, the power pack, it has the same similar footprint, which is actually a good point to make because I will definitely stress to you that when you are installing power packs, take a second look at that model number to make sure that you are installing the correct one for your project. I have seen time and time again that people install a switching power pack when they want dimming on that particular light or circuit, and then they're calling Lutron confused why their switching compact does not dim. So make sure that you are verifying your SKUs before you do that installation. It'll save yourself a lot of headache down the road. And then finally, the power packs that are compatible with Ecosystem and Dolly are very clearly recognizable as they have Eco in the SKU. Going back to the in fixture control, this should give you a little bit closer look of how these things are installed. So the power pack actually stays up in the ceiling per usual, but then on what's hidden into the fixture or very slightly visible is the RF sensor and the um, occupancy and vacancy sensor if you did choose that model. So what this gives you the ability to do is you have a, a sensor and a power pack all in one. It's a super clean installation. And because of all the OEMs we work with, no matter what lights are specced on the job, there's a good chance that Lutron is able to integrate our in-fixture modules with that. A closer look at the Kiwi module, like what is what we like to call it. 
This is going to be that little bar that's hanging on your fixture that is able to detect both your occupancy and, day and daylighting, as well as have an RF receiver built in. Again, this is what it would look like if you just had the RF version, just so you can integrate it with the rest of the system. This wouldn't give you the occupancy and uh, vacancy sensor coverage, but that's, an, that's as simple as adding a radio power saver sensor to that particular space. But if you looked at that list of OEMs and your job does not have those, your job is not spec with any of those OEMs, know that we have options for you that you can retrofit it on the spot, regardless of if we work with them or not. So as you can see by that installation there, again, it's a power pack that's up in the plenum, but what it has is another connection that has a small sensor that comes through the ceiling, and that gives you the ability to have the same features that the Kiwi does, just with a fixture of your choosing if we do not already partner with them. Receptacle control. That is a big part of Title 24 these days, and it's honestly a pretty cool feature that we're able to add into Vive. So now we can offer plug load controls for in either a single gang or a duplex variant. So you can either have one outlet controlled, both outlets controlled, depending on what uh, the customer is requiring. I would say about 90% of these that we sell are coming in the single outlet control, just because Again, this is a sort of a due diligence thing. You want to make sure that you're not plugging anything that needs to stay on constantly into the controlled module. I have seen multiple times before of people plugging in refrigerators, things that need to stay on quite often into the controlled socket, and then they're confused when their fridge smells really bad the next day because it's been off for eight hours. So make sure that when you're using our Vive plug load controllers that you are appropriately plugging in the appropriate appliance into the respective sockets. This is a little visual on how we can integrate all the parts and pieces that I've been talking about into a single office space, including that plug load controller. So as you can see, when your employees present in the space, everything is live and powered. You have the occupancy sensor on the ceiling detecting that a person is in the room. You have the local control on the wall in the form of a Pico wireless remote. You have a power pack up in the ceiling controlling the dimming and controlling the electrical circuits. And then you also have that plug load receptacle in the side controlling your outlet controlled appliances. But as you can see, when that person leaves the room, the occupancy detects that and then will cut power to the space. And that just makes your building more cost effective and more efficient just because you're not wasting energy on spaces where they are not occupied. Again, another visual including that power pack, same concept. When the person is present in the room, everything is locked and loaded, but when they leave, you're able to save energy and cut off the power entirely. The Vive occupancy and date in vacancy sensors, you may have seen these sensors throughout some Lutron systems, and that's because we, use, we do use them in various Lutron systems across the board. So I'll come up to you and give you guys a little bit of a breakdown on these guys. So the puck style sensor, the ceiling sensor, this is a, a pretty popular model of ours. You may see this in many office buildings already, but it's a very shallow footprint. This is about a half an inch coming out of the ceiling. And your install is as simple as screwing off this plastic adapter, either screwing it in using paper clips, whatever you need to do to make it attach. And then this simply screws right in. Battery life on these guys is gonna be 10 years via lithium ion battery in this radio power saver. And then in something like our daylight sensor and Kikos, we use a CR2032 watch style battery for that. They come in a few different flavors. So I just mentioned the ceiling sensor. You see on your screen there, the Twinkie style sensor. Or I like to call it the Twinkie style sensor. And this controls a couple of different things. So what makes this particular model a touch confusing is that this same aesthetic can do both a hallway sensor, a wall mount sensor, and a corner mount sensor. The only variant is gonna be in the SKU. So make sure that when you're installing these out on the job, that your SKU matches up with the application that you're putting it in. And it really is the difference of only one letter. So I really, really encourage you to take a one last look before you put it on the wall. But even if you do, it's as simple as unhooking it and changing it out for the appropriate sensor. Occupancy coverage is a big deal with our sensors, and we have class leading uh, occupancy coverage there. So with our ceiling sensor, that's going to be the graph that you see on the left, the LRF2OC2RB. 
We have a max ceiling height of, I believe, about 12 feet, and that gives you up to 626 square feet of coverage. The lower you, your ceilings are, the less coverage space you have, but know that you can go up to a max of 12 feet. We do not make high bay sensors with Vive just yet, and to be honest with you, I don't anticipate that product coming just because it would drastically reduce the battery life. We rate these battery life at 10 years for all of our wireless sensors. The wall mount sensor is the one you see on your screen there uh, on the right. It gives an 180 degree field of vision and can sit on any wall and detect quite a large field of view, as you can see by that graph there, matching relatively with what we see from the OC2 RV. The corner mount, same concept, but a slightly narrower field of vision. So instead of an 180 degree field of vision from the wall mount, the corner mount gives you a 90 degree field of vision. And well, in my experience, most designers and architects who are specking these out like the look of the corner mount better just because they better hide into the corner in the space. And so they're not just obviously sitting on the wall, but know that you can add both to whatever space that you may need. The hallway sensor is honestly one of my favorite sensors in the Vive catalog. That sees about 150 feet down the hallway and about eight feet wide. Very rarely do I see sensors detecting over 150 feet, but know that when you're putting this Vive wall, hallway sensor, it's designed to do that. If you're looking at these charts, you may notice a pattern. The smaller width, the further you're able to go, but the wider uh, field of vision, the not as far as it can go. So that's why you see that variant in width versus length when it comes to our radio power saver sensors. Tying everything together, we have the hub. So the hub is the glue behind the system, like I mentioned earlier. And this is what gives you app control over your system. So if any of your customers say, hey, I need app control over my commercial office building, this hub has to be on the job in order to make that happen. So you get a lot of different features in there. I'll break these down in a little bit, but the big ones are that time clock, that energy monitoring, you get alerts, adjustable fade rates, all things that are making your Vive system easy to use, intuitive to control, and even easier to troubleshoot to avoid any costly callbacks. The time clock. Everyone wants their lights on a timer, and especially when it comes to saving energy, this is absolutely crucial for making sure that you're making your space as efficient as possible. So you can schedule events up to 10 years in advance. And what is great about the Lutron time clocks, not only in Vive, but also in our residential systems as well, is that it's astronomical. So it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, what specific day it is, it knows when Let's say, for example, the sun is coming up. The sun comes up at a slightly different time each day. Your Vive system knows what time of day that is each and every day. So you know that when you say, I want my lights to come on at sunrise, they will come on at sunrise and they will shut off at sunset if that's what you choose to do. It is a really, really smart time clock feature that eliminates the need to make constant adjustments. It's a set it and forget it kind of thing. And it's very easy to set up in your Vive app. It's as simple as creating a meeting appointment in Outlook. The fade rate adjustment. So this was something that when I started with Lutron, I was like, why aren't the lights turning off instantly when I turn off the button? Well, think about it. I'm in a pretty large classroom right here, the door's over there, but the controls for this room are actually behind my computer. So if I wanted to turn off the lights, I would go over to that control, press the off button, and start to make my way towards the door. But if the lights turn off instantly, I'd be walking through the dark. So with the adjustable fade rate adjustment, I can go in and set that fade rate to be whatever it may be, up to 90 seconds or 90 minutes. So what I can do is with the minute I, touch, I press that button there, I can start making my way out of the room in daylight, and then knowing when I leave the room, the lights will appropriately shut off. And again, it's easy to set up in the buy app. The zone level time clock. So this provides you the ability to set each individual device to a different level using those time clock events. So what that gives you the control to do is that, say you want this row of lights to come on at 9 a.m. at 50%, but you want this other row of lights to come on at 10 a.m. at 100%. You can get very granular with the control over the system, and this is another feature that allows you to do that. The as-built reports. This is a really, really cool feature that we offer and it makes understanding what products are in your building really simple and easy to use. So when you're going through the programming of the Vive system, I'm not going to touch a ton on the, on the programming side of things for the sake of this webinar, but what I will tell you is that with these as-built reports, you can see what products are in which room. 
So when it comes time to either replacing a device, upgrading a device, you know exactly what's existing and it will always be with you for the life of the system. And then alerts. So ignoring the API part of things, the big thing that people love about the alerts is that it tells you when the batteries in the wireless devices are running low and need to be replaced. It gives you quite a bit of advanced notice for this, so you're never left with controls that don't work. But this is another thing that people are worried about with wireless these days. How do I know when the batteries go out? How easy are the batteries to replace? I mentioned that we have a 10 year battery life on all of our wireless products, and the batteries range from a lithium ion battery that looks like a, a small double A battery to those 2032 watch batteries that you can easily pick up at Walmart, Target, what have you, or even in, a, in an, an independent location that sources these batteries. So the Vibe system will give you the ability to show which batteries are running low and appropriately replace them. Just so, like I said, you're never left in the dark with dead batteries on wireless controls. Then cloud backup. And again, this is more of a security feature rather than a convenience, but you know, if anything were to go wrong with either your Wi-Fi or your power, this eliminates the need to have to go back and reprogram the entire system. So your system is constantly backing up data to the cloud. That includes all your programming, time clock settings, schedules, and what, what have you. And so say something catastrophic happened. Let's say you're in Tampa right now and you got hit by that hurricane and you're building lost Wi-Fi and power. Know that once power is restored and everything is brought back to normal, it's as simple as turning the system back on and you're right where you started. You don't need to have to go to every single power pack, call your electrician back, get up in the ceiling again. It's as simple as just turning it back on and you're good to go. And then finally, the last big feature of Vive is the BACnet integration. So for those buildings that have existing building management software into them, Vive is able to play nice with those systems. And this is what also gives you some of the demand response, load shedding, all those facility management things that both get you up to Title 24 speed, as well as other convenience features that a facility manager might look for when they are upgrading or selecting their lighting control system. So as you can see by that list, we can do HVAC control, security, locks, everything under the sun that falls under the commercial office space. The Vibe Hub is able to integrate with those third party systems and is able to make a seamless transition from controlling both your lights to the other systems that are existing in your building. The hub comes in three different models. So the HJS0 is our starter hub. So you get all the features that I just talked about aside from the backnet integration, and it can do up to 75 devices. You may be wondering, why do you even offer a hub that can do 75 devices? Well, for some commercial spaces, having 700 device capability can be quite honestly a little bit overkill. So we made a 75 device hub for those smaller commercial office spaces I know I mentioned Starbucks. Most Starbucks use the HJS Zero Hub just because you're not putting 700 devices in your typical Starbucks. The basic HJS One Hub gives you all the same great features, no backend integration just yet, but it does up the ante to 700 devices. Finally, the Premium Hub, the HJS Two, gives you all the features plus backnet plus the 700 devices. So if you need all the features that Vive has to offer, the HJS2 hub is the one you're going to be wanting to go with. But what's great about Vive is I mentioned scalability. So if you're starting in a small office space that, you know, 75 devices is an appropriate amount for you, you can get the starter hub, knowing that with the addition of a licensing agreement, you can make that hub compatible for up to 700 devices. So depending on how your business needs are growing, you can start with the appropriate products for your space and then scale it as you need. Another cool feature about the hub is that it extends the range of our wireless controls. I'm not going to call this a mesh network because Vive is not a mesh network. Our clear connect is direct line communication. But just know that if you have devices that may be exceeding the traditional specs of our wireless communication, that we're able to do that in the space. So we have that hub sends out a signal that goes up to a 71 foot radius. So in theory, you could connect a Pico to a Pow Pack up to 150 feet away because you have the middleman, the hub, sort of directing traffic in that signal. It's not bouncing it off to the Pow Pack. It's simply able to take that information and send it to that Pow Pack to give you a little bit more range in those cases. 
And like you see on your screen there, it can extend the range for up to 15 picos. So you do have to be relatively selective on which picos you do need that extension for. But if you're adhering to the traditional uh, 60 foot line of sight range, you shouldn't have a problem with those specific use case scenarios where you may need to extend the distance just a little bit more. But you're not limited to just picos. It works the same way with our occupancy sensors as well. Because our occupancy sensors and Pico remotes speak the same Clear Connect Type A, it's the same concept. That Clear Connect works from the 71 foot radius from the sensor to the hub to the load controller that might be controlling this particular sensor. So, regardless of if you have a Pico or a wireless sensor, know that you can get additional range from your system with the addition of the hub. But the one caveat is that you cannot connect. You cannot extend the range from the hub to hub. So we recommend about one hub per floor, depending on how large your building is. One hub will cover up to 10,000 square feet of office space. But what this concept is trying to show is that if you have a Pico on, let's say, floor one, it cannot connect to the hub on floor two and connect to the power pack that's connected to the second hub. So you can't cross over between hubs. They have to be on the same hub in order to get that range extension. And then the software. So programming is a thing that, you know, some people can be intimidated by, but Vive makes it very, very easy to simply pull out your laptop and run through the programming, makes it very, very easy for those on site doing those final adjustments. It's just a matter of, like I said, pulling out your laptop, connecting to the Vive Hub, and you're off to the races as far as naming devices, connecting them to the appropriate load controller, and making the system as easy and as intuitive to use for your end user as possible. And because everything is networked together, as you can see on the back of our hub here, we do have a CAT6 connection that gives you access to the local server in the building. And that's what gives you the ability to network your hubs across multiple floors. So that regardless if you have a one-story office building or a 10-story office building, that facility manager can be in his office with full visibility into the system from that one iPad, iPhone, whatever his uh, preferred method of control is knowing that all everything is linked together because it's coming back to the local server and then being reflected to you in the Vive app. This is an example of the Vive View dashboard. So at a glance, you're pulling up your lighting system and you can see the amount of energy you're saving, what kind of schedules you might have for that day, what your load shed is, and what your occupancy coverage is. Because you have these wireless occupancy sensors everywhere, you can detect which rooms are being utilized, which rooms are not, and the best case, the best use case scenario for this is thinking of a large college or university. There are many, many classrooms outside of school hours that may be used, but may not be used. So why would you be wasting energy in rooms that are underutilized or no one's even in there? The Vive View software gives you the ability to look quickly at a glance which rooms are being utilized so you can appropriately allocate your energy resources to the rooms that are being most frequently used. Again, these are some of the different features that you have as far as what you see within the Vive View software. So you have floor plan control, uh, you have your energy reporting, and then you also have your space utilization like I talked about earlier. The floor plan navigation, pending you uploaded the plans of your building into the Vive View system, this can break down on a room by room level which products are working, which are on, which are being utilized best. And what this also gives you the ability to do is make on the fly adjustments on a per room per area basis to the load controllers or buy products that are in that space. It makes it very easy to fine tune exactly how you want the lights to behave or, what, or how you want the lighting controls to behave in each space of the Vive system. It does the same thing for energy as well. So you can see which areas are using more energy or less energy relative to others. And then it does the same thing with occupancy as well. So it's able to really give you the full package on if the lights are on, are they being dimmed enough? Are you using too much, too much or too little energy? And if the space is actually being occupied. So all of this can be very easily accessible in the Vive View software. And then the space utilization, I'm not going to harp too much on this. I think everyone has a good idea of how space utilization operates within the Vive system. But again, just making sure that you know which rooms are being utilized and which are not. The energy logging is a really cool feature, so you're able to see how your energy usage has changed over time. 
So it can be from the start of your Vive journey or from the end, depending on what uh, your time frame looks like. But you're able to see very clearly how your energy is being used over time. And you can set different thresholds if you have facility goals, department goals on energy savings and energy usage. Emergency lighting. So Vive does do a great job with emergency lighting. We do offer specific power packs for emergency lighting, and I'll show you about these in a couple in um, some of the next slide. So the first step, you're going to put the green power packs and all the in-wall sensors on the normal setting. So they're going to be operating business as usual. The second step is going to be putting the emergency power packs on either the emergency generator or inverter. It really doesn't matter. We make this very, very easy to understand which PAL packs are for emergencies and which PAL packs are normal. The one I have in my hand here and the one you saw on the previous slide, the normal ones are going to be green, the emergency ones are going to be red. So it's very easy to identify which is it, which is what. You're going to be putting the Vive Hub on that emergency inverter as well, not exclusively on the emergency inverter, but know that you need to put it on the inverter so that when something does go wrong, the Vive Hub knows that it's time to kick on the emergency inverter power and trigger the emergency power packs that are also on that generator or inverter. And then you're going to be connecting the loop ELI to the hub. This is what's able to give that information to the hub so it's accurately able to take the normal information then switch it over to the emergency information in the event of a power emergency in the space. And then finally, it's just a matter of going into the Vive app, setting your emergency lighting settings, and you're all good to go. The schematic should give you a pretty good idea of how all the parts and pieces work together and show you how the emergency power packs are integrated into both the emergency inverter as well as the hub being integrated into the inverter. And then you can customize these settings in the Vive View software to know which, um, which power packs are on the emergency, which are not, and uh, your various settings that are involved in the emergency settings. And then using a shunt relay, you, it is possible to go to use a shunt relay for emergency lighting, but if you follow those last five steps, you should be a majority of the way there to getting your building onto the emergency um, lighting that you will require. But however, not all buildings are the same, so using a shunt relay is an option for you if you do choose to, if you do choose to do that. And that just about wraps up my presentation for you guys today. Thank you all for your time this morning. Hope you were able to learn a little bit more about Vive. I had a great time talking with you today. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, Independent has my contact information. I would be more than happy to work with any of you guys. Uh, happy to see you guys uh, in your various locations throughout California. And again, thank you to ALR and Patsy for setting this all up, as well as Nate Lane from Independence and Andy Chick for giving me the opportunity to present to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending this training. For this and many more, please visit iesupply.com or our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash independent electric supply.